but first we will be uh, binding the receiver so telemetry auto configuration so it's going to be looking at whatever is available on the receiver and as it's on the binding process uh, the ESC is not on which means we'll have about everything that is in the receiver so here it's a power safe receiver but we will not have the telemetry of the ESC so to have the telemetry of the ESC We'll go in the telemetry menu and we'll do auto configuration here. So it's going to relook up all the packets and this time it has the ESC has been powered up, which will be able to be found. So you have the ESC, the smart battery and every component from the, uh, the receiver. To declutter the telemetry screen, because we have many, I'm going to remove the display of the voltage. I'm going to save that. I'm going to remove the tempter too. Don't forget to save the RPM. Save. I'm going to keep the altitudes, the RX pack, and the Vario, the ESC, uh, and those two are the default one. So now, if you go to the telemetry screen, you will have something with the generic dashboard. Smart screen, flight log, min max, ESC status, altitude, RX Pax capacity, vario, and the program the programmable part for running the avian. So a couple of things that I like to do when I'm on that screen is first to be taking care of the vario that need to be enabled so you need to allow the tone so here i'm going to use switch e2 and i'm going to change the lift report from one to one meter per second to 0.5 so probably closer to a foot a second and the sync report, I'm going to increase it at three, which means I will have a good information about lift. But if it's a regular sync, um, my my vario will not give me the downtone. It will only give me the the downtone if I really have some serious sync. So one important step is you need to save. Otherwise, every change that has been made will be lost. One thing that I'd like to add to is on the Vario switch here. So Vario is in engage, Vario is disengage. On the disengage Vario, I like to have the altitude report. So to do that, we go on model setup. We go on audio events, switch change report, and add one. So we're gonna select that switch. So we position zero, and we're gonna run the macro Altitude Vario, Altitude, oh. there we go, which means every oh. time that we're going to be engaging the Vario, you will have the beep, 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 and every time that we're going to be shutting up for a small moment, Minus you're going to have the altitude report, and then you can re-engage the Vario. So every time that I need the altitude or want a confirmation of the altitude, pushing back and the information it will be uh, spoke loudly to you on the ESC screen uh, I'm not using that much uh, especially on sailplane but uh, the, the main thing is in a couple of first flight what I'm really paying attention to is the max amp here uh, that you have in flight to confirm if the uh, power settings that has been designed is not exceeding the capacity of the motor of the ESC uh, so it's, it's a screen that I have a tendency to use on the first 
four or five flights and after that as I know where it's at uh, I do not necessarily look back up at that screen I like to have a couple of uh, information sum up on the first screen of the telemetry so to adjust that go to model setup telemetry dashboard setup this is the current one you can choose different number so here I like to keep the battery transmitter percentage I'm going to move here and edit and put the hold hold frame loss I'm going to put here timer 1 which is the timer for my motor setup on this glider and I'm going to be adding the Eric Spax Charge Use A and Eric Spax Charge Use B. Oh. So now, as you can see, I just have one pack connected. I have my transmitter battery, flight log, the holds, the frame loss. So how is it? To, how is the connection with the airframe? The timer on how much motor time do I have? and the capacities that I've used on each of the pack on that Parasafe receiver. If you like fancy, fancy graphics, uh, you can set up a gauge. So I'm gonna do the same thing, telemetry, gauge panel. I'm gonna use two side for my receiver pack. So I'm gonna take the consumption here Solid fear meter grid line. I want it to start at zero. And the end being, let's say, 2000. Mine are 2500 milliamp packs. So it's going to be red when it's empty. And green when it's full. Good. Do the same thing for the second one. Here's a gauge panel. So when you have no depletion, it's going to be in the in the green, like you have here in 98. So it's very very close. And the more your battery is going to be drained on that power safe receiver, the closer you will get to the red zone, which is you need to land and uh, you need to recharge the battery. I usually go about half capacity and and swap my packs uh, just because they're exchangeable on all of my airplane. On that PowerSafe uh, receiver, uh, one of the significant improvements in the uh, new generation, so this is a AR14400T, is the capability to reset uh, the, the count of the RX capacity from the radio. So you can go in manual adjust, forward programming, Power safe telemetry. Next, reset capacities. And you're going to be able to reset the capacity once you have closed your cockpit because it's usually when you remember about the fact that you need to reset the capacity because you put some fresh battery. Uh, that's about it for my basic telemetry setup. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment. And thanks for watching.